Welcome back. This is a pause here on Join It. Before we deal with that $134 million judgment debt imposed on Ghana, and the danger is that we might lose some of our properties abroad, let's talk about the environment. Because environmentalists are intensifying pressure on government to begin work on the Keta coastline to prevent the city's total collapse. They warn that governments continue to delay in starting the sea defense projects in Keta municipality could result in the complete destruction of the area within a few years. In 2022, the government secured approximately $150 million to protect three coastal communities, including Keta. However, a year later, environmentalists lament no visible progress. In the second part of today's climate series, Vanishing Shores of Keta, Carlos Caloni explores how rising sea levels are affecting tourism revenue and even the dead in the Keta municipality. from negative impact on housing and livelihood, the rising levels of the sea is negatively impacting on tourism here in Keta. The owner of this facility tells me how devastating the recent tidal waves have been on his facility. The cost is very tremendous. First, we are losing clients. So no income is coming, it's a loss. We still have to protect or keep certain facilities running, like the fridges, security and all this, thing. electricity will be on, it's a cost. Now, in my case, in an attempt to protect the facility from being destroyed totally, I have to find a, a way of uh, protecting my property. As I stand now, uh, I spent close to a million cities to get this facility standing here. James Akoli is a former assemblyman and a tour guide of this fort. The state of the fort now is due to the rising sea level. At that time, in 1980, the sea came and destroyed part of the fort, three quarters of the fort have been washed into the sea. So that what left now is one third we are seeing today. You see, the state of it now is partially rain. So if properly done, I think it will attract a lot of visitors to the fort. So it has declined the number of visitors that come into the fort. At the Keta Municipal Assembly, officials lament climate change's devastating impact on revenue generation. Ransford Owusu is the Assembly's finance officer. Truly, this uh, tidal wave things normally when it do happen affects the, uh, the business premises of the various uh, businesses along the coast and it, it does affect our property rate collection and then the collection of business operating permit from the various businesses that are al along the coast. Sometimes when they leave their canoes and nets at the shore, before they will come back the next day, it has been taken away by the tidal waste and that also affects their livelihood and then it also affects the local economy because uh, Keta is mainly a fishing uh, community. When we go to the market for revenue mobilization, you see that a lot of the farmers which hitherto were coming to the, the market, they don't they no more come again. Despite these devastating challenges, Many, including environmentalists, strongly believe practical steps can be taken to reverse the trend and protect lives, livelihoods, and property. I believe that something can be done. With my own experience, by dumping these boulders, what I have seen, it can be done. The rock sea defense protection, which we use here mostly when we get the challenge, is 
only uh, a short term measure or a temporary measure that is put in place to contain the situation after which major solution is found and then the issue is resolved and there are a lot of countries that we can cite. Unfortunately for us in Ghana and in Africa, uh, I don't know if it's, it's because of funding or because of lack of research, we have relied heavily on uh, this Roxy Defense Protection and that has really destroyed the marine environment and coastal biodiversity, aside not being able to solve the problem that we seek to resolve. The new trend is about the hybrid, where we can do a little of what the rock and the boulders, they should do it. But the people have lost enough land that need to be reclaimed. And uh, the hybrid gives them the opportunity to still have access to the, the beach and go on with their you know, daily activities like fishing and farming. In 2022, the World Bank approved a $246 million project to strengthen coastal resilience in West African countries, including the Gambia, Ghana, and the Guinea-Bissau. Right, joining us for a conversation on this is Albert Fiatu, Executive Director, Center for International Maritime Affairs, Ghana, also Jack Quintok, uh, to harm student in environment and sustainable development london school of economy will also be joined by professor kwesi apianin ado he's with the department of marine science at the university of uh, ghana so uh, let, let, let's start from let's start with professor kwesi apianin ado he's with the department of marine science at the university of ghana prof you're welcome to the pulse and i mean the situation at keta what do you think must be done must be done immediately now that it's unclear when the, the port will be built and hello to your viewers uh, i'm actually from the department of marine and fishery sciences uh, university of ghana mm. now to the question yes what do we what can be done uh, you realize that uh, we have been using hard engineering approach in managing coastal erosion. I always say that we, in our quest in, to manage coastal erosion, we tend to fight erosion instead of effectively managing it. Um, we realize that hard engineering approach has not been the best way of solving yeah. or managing coastal erosion, because what you do is that you try to control erosion at one point or a, a, a locality, mm. but you just transfer the problem from that position to another. We have the downdrift and the updrift side. So these structures tend to trap sediment, and once the sediments are trapped, they build the beaches for you, and we are happy about it. And that is what happens in Keta mm. with the Keta Sea Defense. We trap sediments, they build the beaches, and it's beautiful. But then when you go to the downdrift side, because we are trapping sediment, mm. we are depriving those areas of sediment. And once you deprive the area of sediment, naturally, it will look for sediment to re-establish equilibrium state. And by so doing, you tend to have an enhanced erosion. And that is why we have increased erosion on the downdrift side of the sea defense in Keta. What but we need to do is to be proactive. Should we continue with hard engineering by repositioning and reallocating or re, you know, re sending the, the challenges down there. No, we should look at new ways by which we can manage erosion. And to me, like uh, uh, somebody, one person said in the documentary, yes. the hybrid approach is what we should be looking at. Right. I also have in the studio, Jack Shuham, student in Environment and Sustainable Development, London School of Economics. Jack, you're welcome. Good afternoon. So you've been in Ghana for how long? For nearly a month now. So yes, not, not too long. End so of July. So what's your observation as far as this matter is concerned? I think that in terms of um, looking at processes like coastal erosion from an international perspective, obviously me coming in from the UK, it's important to contextualize um, the issues in terms of the vulnerabilities of the communities they're affecting, mm -hmm. the specific geolog uh, geophysical processes and vulnerabilities of the topography, etc. So in terms of what you can generalize from and bring in from an international perspective um, is needs to be carefully looked at. But I think what can be brought through is looking at sort of processes of 
who's involved in the development of policies and strategies and those sort of that inclusivity right. to create approaches which really can work for the communities. I think that's a real lesson that, um, that is... So these communities, what danger are they in? Sorry? Th these communities, what danger are they in from what you observed? So I think these issues are multi multifaceted. We've seen in the documentary issues of tourism, mm -hmm. issues of food security and fishing. Um, so it's, it's hard to isolate um, and I think that sort of leads into the approach that needs to be taken in terms of making sure that we really incorporate all those different um, impacts and effects um, that, are, that are so multifaceted. All right. Uh, Prof, let me bring you in again. And the last time I hosted the Minister for Works and Housing, Kojo Pankroma, he made it clear that in terms of the work we are doing to, to protect the coastal line, we've done just under 10%. Now, the Ghana Hydrological Authority, they've also warned that if nothing is done immediately, places like the Adisade College and a few other places from the coastal line in the central region all the way to the water region may be consumed by the ocean. Are we just overlooking these warnings as a state? Are we slow in our, in our response to this? But again, if funding is an issue, what can be done immediately as a short-term measure to contain the dangers that we are in? I think we need to clearly understand what the challenges are. You know, erosion, um, we, we are experiencing erosion because there are some underlying factors. What are these factors? And that is what, you know, effective and uh, pragmatic, you know, approach should be adopted in looking at it. And research therefore becomes very important. We need to have a consistent monitoring regime so that we clearly understand the dynamics within the coastal environment. Mm. And that is where we can prescribe the right solution to uh, the problems. The one solution fits all approach is not the best way to go. If we understand what is happening in Keta, we understand what is happening in Cape Coast, mm. we understand what is happening in, in Takradi, it may come out that the solution we are applying in Keta may not necessarily apply to to Takradi or Cape Coast. So having a very clear understanding of the underlying issues based on science, mm. to me, is the way to go. Are we delaying? Well, it's better late than never. Let's start now. We need to have a national discussion, you know, on, on how we want to uh, protect and how we want to manage erosion along our coast. To me, it can be done. It's not late. We just need to get, you know, going. And once we do that, we should be able to, to, to solve the problem. Uh, do, do, do you see the typical Ghanaian attitude at play here? That even though the warning exists for us to take action, we are under the impression that God will take care of us, or this warning and the danger seems so far away from us? Well, I wouldn't say I see a typical Ghanaian attitude, but what I see is that we haven't developed a pragmatic approach in dealing with erosion. Mm. You can't, you know, what happens is that we only talk about erosion when there's a problem. But we must always be talking about coastal dynamics. And as we always talk about coastal dynamics, we have a clear understanding of what is going on along our coast. Mm. So we will not be taken, you know, by surprise. Erosion, we, if we have, a, you know, an, a, 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 a well existing monitoring scheme and we have an understanding of what is going on, we can, you know, have a, a knowledge about what is, what, is, what is going to happen. And that prepares us. So I think uh, uh, the, the typical Ghanaian attitude, well, I may not see it here. I think we must approach the issue scientifically. In this case, lives are at stake. But if you look at elsewhere around the world, in the developed countries, the coastline is also a serious revenue, you know, generation, you know, entity. I mean, so how how must we approach this? As we protect lives, as we can also turn the same place into a tourism attraction center to generate revenue for the state. Yes, we 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 must first of all ensure that you know every life is very important. So we must ensure that lives are protected. In a situation whereby it becomes difficult to, to protect life, let's relocate. It's also a management option. Right. If people need to be relocated from where they are and save their life so that we can really prescribe the right solution to the problem, I think is the best way to go. We should not be afraid to relocate people. 
uh, people may not wish to move. But if it becomes expedient, we do that. Let's do it. You it know, is, I, I think that's that's one of the ways to look at it. But Prof, it is pretty obvious that in terms of funding, government obviously may not be able to produce the needed billions of dollars to, 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 to provide a, a permanent solution to this issue. So, I mean, for the little that we have, you talk about relocation. If they are unwilling to do so, and government attempt to build a sea defense wall, uh, which I'm told is about 280 kilometers of our coastline, we've not even done 10% of it. Uh, what, what, what would be your suggestion to, especially to the Minister for Western Housing? Well, if, if we know about the potential within the marine environment, uh, if there's a need to spend money to protect the marine environment, to me, it's not an investment that will go waste. Mm -hmm. You mentioned coastal tourism. Mm -hmm. There are so many things we can derive from the marine environment. If we take on board the blue economy, right. if, if we push the blue economy agenda, we should be able to, 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 to generate a lot of revenue from the marine environment. And to me, if we protect it, knowing that it holds a lot of economic potential, that should not deter us from doing that. I will advise the Minister for, for, for Western Housing to take the bull by the horn. If there's a way of getting the money, let's do it. And once we do it, the coastal environment will provide the necessary resources to generate the revenue to pay back. We should do it. We can't afford to lose the coastal environment. Let's Prof. have a holistic approach in managing it. Prof, Ado, thank you so much for your time. Jack is You're still welcome. here. So, so, Jack, I mean, uh, you, you are from the UK, and I'm sure uh, you are very much abreast with how things are done. In, in, in the, the same situation we have in Ghana, same as this in the UK. What lessons can Ghana learn from the UK example, for, for, for example? So, I think... The UK is obviously is a coastal, is an island nation. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of the same sort of challenges that Ghana has. Mm -hmm. Where it slightly differs is the social context into which these forces are playing. So I think sort of touching back into what, to what um, Prof. Gwesi said, it's difficult to sort of apply one size fits all mm -hmm. approach in terms of the technologies or the specific sort of infrastructures that can be developed because it's a very different context. Mm -hmm. What I think can be taken um, is the sort of touch on what I, what I said before, is about that inclusion in, in the designing of these strategies. Right. Obviously, as a young person myself, I think that the inclusion of young voices is of paramount. Um, and I think that there are lots of forums and ways in which we can help to incorporate that into the strategies and approaches developed by governments. Um, that they're, they're, beginning to do that in the UK and also in Ghana, um, from what I've seen. So I think it's really about hammering down on that and hammering down on those kind of community-led approaches to ensure that the product is, is meeting the needs and requirements of the communities that it's desiring to serve. Uh, under the circumstances, you, you support relocation for the communities that are likely to be run over by the, the ocean. I think it's, it's a last resort because it's, 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 there's a lot of, of course, psychological and all sorts of other pressures within that. But if that's the, if that's the question in terms of saving a life, as Professor Kwesi said, mm. then of course it has, to be, it has to be considered as a viable option. All right. Thank you so much for coming through. Uh, Jack Shuram is a student in Environment and Sustainable Development London School of Economics, and we'll be talking about the environment early on. You also heard...